Wow. Can you, you in the first row, take a minute and turn around? Because there are a thousand people here talking about radical change, and it's a sight to behold. It is just amazing. Um, <laughs> because as my organisation officially has a pretty non-committal approach to independence, we're in absolutely no doubt that we need massively radical change. And let me tell you that from my own experience, my own personal thinking on the whole independence referendum, I draw on my experience in Australia, which from a pretty simplistic way has, you know, really crudely, the sort of independence you're looking at. We've still got that monarchy. We still get invited to the Commonwealth Games. At least that's something we can win. <laughs> and we have a sort of social union with the UK. You know, we've, we have that whole, you know, colonial expat culture. But my country, despite having all those sort of official lines of independence, despite that, Australia still has an economic model that's beholden to large corporations. We still have an economic model that of late doesn't even seem to put the environment after profit, but of late it seems to forget that the environment exists at all. And we've got a political discourse in Australia, despite massive wealth, that blames the poor and the vulnerable for their situation. So it's not a model in and of itself that you should be looking to emulate. And of late we can't even beat the English at any sport, though I'm hoping this morning's headlines might suggest the tide is turning in cricket. So clearly, <laughs> thank you, need all the help we can get. Just voting one way or another next September is not enough. It's not enough at a time when our political masters and our business elites are patting each other on the back, claiming that the economy is recovering and claiming that Britain is back on course. Mark Carney just about 10 days ago told us that not only is the glass half full, but very soon the glass will actually be full. Now, this business as usual approach, this rush to recover that old economic model, this is a broken economy, a broken economic model that has shattered too many of our communities. It's not just the wrong glass, but it's the wrong drink that's going to leave us suffering a very nasty hangover. And that's already apparent because these green shoots that everyone is heralding are actually little weeds. They're little weeds in the form of the growth in the number of pawn shops on our high streets, growth in the number of people turning turn to payday loans, as Colin said, growth in the, the queues at food banks in the sixth richest country in the world, numbers in, of people going to food banks increased six times in the last six months. Growth in the use of antidepressants, as reported by the OECD recently, growth in personal debt, Growth, as Colin again said, in the prices of essential goods and services, food that we rely on to keep us alive. But at the same time, growth in bonuses at the top end of the income spectrum as they pull further and further away. Growth in, people say, in numbers of people saying they're struggling to keep up with bills. Growth in the polarisation of our labour market, with the TUC reporting that the quality of jobs, the number of decent jobs in our economy is at a 20-year low. Growth in the proportion of people who are working but are still in poverty, as Saffron alluded to. And growth in the number of zero-hour contracts as people are treated as just-in-time inventory, just on demand when business needs require and then disposable when businesses no longer need them. But don't kid yourselves. Don't go kidding yourself that that's just Australia or that's just England or that's just Westminster, that's just anywhere south of Yorkshire. Don't kid yourselves that it couldn't happen here. Because let me warn you that here is a place that just last week the Parliament voted to support a law requiring that regulatory agencies such as SEPA contribute to economic growth. Here is a country that just up the road spends 80 million of public money expanding the Buchanan Gallery shopping centre, an agenda so vigorously pursued that whereas Glasgow was once the second biggest city of the British Empire, it's now Britain's second biggest shopping destination. And let me tell you that Oxfam sees every day the trauma of that transition in the communities that we work with. Here is a place that for too long has told us that building a 24-hour mega supermarket 
It equates to regeneration for those communities suffering decades of deindustrialization. And here is a place run by people of all political hues, except, <laughs> except the Greens, who continue to think that economic growth is the means to flourish in Scotland. But when we measure economic, economic growth through GDP, which really should stand for grossly distorted picture or <laughs> generally deplorable policies, <laughs> when we measure our economic growth through GDP, we see the effects of pursuing something that is so consumption orientated and more importantly so blind to distribution. And so putting radical, putting radical on the agenda is long overdue because we can't just recover that old economic model. We can't go back to business as usual. What we need is a radical break from the politics which panders to power and wealth. A radical new measure of how we define our national success, something that Oxfam has been working on. A radical shift in the way we look after each other through our collective institutions. Radical change in the way that we do business and how we remunerate those who undertake it. A radical reorientation of the reward system so that earnings are more equal and that our public bodies are actually charged with delivering greater social economic equality rather than just economic growth. And what we need is many more meetings of radical minds such as yourselves mm -hmm. to build that critical mass, to build the critical mass behind the changes that our country, and let me tell you, our world, so desperately needs. So have a good conference. Thank you. Thank you.